I'm Jack Talbert. This is my persuasive speech on why we should be using renewable energy. And why should we be using renewable energy? I saw a headline. It was disconcerting to me. It made me feel sad on the inside. There was a young man, and he felt at odds with his life, and he drove into a garage, shut the door, turned on the engine, and he died from carbon monoxide inhalation. Because the exhaust from fossil fuels is deadly. So how does that affect you and me? We didn't know this kid, personally. Well, it turns out that the area in our atmosphere outside of that garage is about 8 billion times the size of the interior space of that garage. So it's 8 billion times larger. Here's the problem. There's a billion cars on the road. When we have 8 billion cars on the road and they're all burning fossil fuels at the rate of today, we're going to experience the same thing that that kid experienced inside the garage. We're going to have unbreathably toxic levels of carbon monoxide and other airborne chemicals that should not be airborne in our atmosphere. If the Earth was a basketball, our what they call troposphere, which is the area in which man can live, is about as thick relationally as uh, saran wrap, as a, as a little plastic cling wrap. So if you cover the basketball and the cling wrap, that's the area that we live in. The highest man has ever been and still be in the earth is 100 miles up, and the deepest that man has ever been down is two miles. And if we're outside of that range, people can't live. People can't really live above 10,000 feet. Renewable energy. That's our friend. Fossil fuels, very scary and threatening. But renewable energy is our friend. I looked up some facts a little bit ago. Man, every, everything coal burned, nuclear fission rods, uh, even wind turbines, everything put together on planet Earth for man's production of electricity or steam power, any type of anything that can be measured in joules or watts is 550 terajoules per year. Now the sun, its output is 40,000 terajoules per second. 800 times as much output comes from the sun in a second as man produces in an entire year. There's more than enough solar power. Now the sun also heats part of the planet facing the sun and the part that's not cools off and that produces wind wind power, which is also solar power. And when you come back to it, everything really is solar power. But fossil fuels are a non-renewable source. You're done. A lot of the fossil fuel today is from extinct plants and animals. Some of it, on the other hand, is from geological processes of the Earth being formed. And we know this because planets like Jupiter and Neptune have things like methane gas on them, but we do not suspect them ever to have had a large population of dinosaurs or plants. So some of the natural gas and some of the fossil fuels that we use today are from a geological formation of the planet Earth, and they are absolutely not renewable. Once it's gone, it's done. You have to go off of the planet to find more. Renewable energy is something that we always have access to, as long as we have sunlight, as long as we have water. Stephen Hawkins, who is a British uh, astrophysicist, he is renowned and noted and expert in his field who wrote the book the history of the universe. He claims that the biggest threat to the survival of mankind doesn't come from asteroid strikes, it doesn't come from alien invasions or anything to this extent. It's man's own activity. He who is the expert in the field says man's activity is the biggest threat to man and man's sustained activities. Beavers affect their ecosystem more than any other animal apart from man. And what they do is they build a dam. The dam wells up the water, and other animals come and live in the wetlands. If the beavers didn't build the dams, there wouldn't be any wetlands. There wouldn't be these other thriving, surviving animal populations. Man has done the same thing as we build for our space. We encroach on the space of the other animals. In our entire solar system, we have found no other life as we know it. Now, there's other life. There's life uh, abundant throughout the universe. It's just not as we know it. 
and as we know it is breathes air, drinks water, walks upright, looks like us. The only place we've seen life as we know it is in that little piece of plastic cling wrap. We've got to keep the cling wrap clean. <laughs> we have to keep the cling wrap fresh. We have to keep it healthy. We have to keep it uh, cling wrap that seals in the freshness. We can do that with renewable energy. We can't necessarily do that with non-renewable energy. Now, as far as changing the Earth's troposphere, uh, man's activity isn't the largest at doing this. It's not all man's evil. Volcanic eruptions, the sun itself, uh, the moon as it goes around, tidal bulges generate heat inside the Earth because it causes the crust of the planet Earth to move. And these are things beyond man's control. Nature always takes things to the extreme. Nature creates exactly as many volcanoes as it can. It creates exactly as much warmth in the ocean as it can. It creates exactly as much motion in the Earth's crust as it can. So already we are exactly at the threshold. Man contributes just 2%. But it's enough. That 2% is enough to take it from exactly to its breaking point threshold, which is how nature works over that point. That's why we have predators. If the predators didn't eat the population of wildebeest in Africa, there would be too many wildebeest, it would cause famine, and then the wildebeest population would be much more negatively impacted by that, by its own activities, than it would by that of being chased by the predator. And we are constantly being chased by the predator of nature because nature takes things to the extreme, and humankind has also taken things to the extreme. But we have the ability to change that. Mankind has the ability to think. Mankind is the only animal of which we know that can predict its future. We can see what the cause and effect is, and then we can make the choice which cause to which effect. I'm saying with renewable energy, we can have the effect of sustainability rather than inevitability. I'm Jack Talbert, and the points that I wanted to try and persuade you to consider in this seven to eight minute long speech is we should use sustainable energy because it is here today. It's primarily based on sunlight. It's not necessarily the collection of sunlight through solar panels, but through the collection of heat, through the collection of wind, and through the collection of photovoltaics. The reason being, once you burn a fossil fuel, it's gone. It is not anything that can ever be had again. Renewable energy, as long as we have sunlight, as long as we can get moisture, that's the only thing that we need. And that's something that we have in abundance right now and need to be taking advantage of. I thank you for your time and attention.